Okay, so, I said in the last chapter that we were going to work on the lighting and everything. However, I want to do one tiny intermediate chapter that does have to do with lighting, but it's something that I want to show you, because I feel like that even though it's more advanced, it's still really cool to show you. So, please do watch this video, because the beginning of this video, we will turn our scene black, well, uh, dark, and the reason we are going to do that is because else I cannot show you what I want to show you. I know, I'm very cryptic here. Uh, what I'm going to do first is let's actually clean up our scene a bit. So we have our buildings, which is fine. We have our lighting, we have our roads. I'm going to go ahead and just throw all of our scaffolding into a scaffolding folder. I'm going to throw all of our... Uh, ta -ta -ta, background building. Let's do our background buildings into BG buildings. And the reason I'm recording this and not just doing this offline is because else you guys might not know where everything is. This one is going to be rooftops. This one is going to be. Uh, actually, we already have like a car cars folder or not? Okay, I guess I removed it. Cars. These are going to just be like later on medium scale props. For now, I want to have the cables. Cables. These are going to be decals, which will, which later on we are going to place also even more of them. And we have a lot of scaffolding again. Which we can go ahead and just simply click and drag into your scaffolding folder. And I want to go ahead and just call these all street assets. So these are street assets. This trash can is street assets. These. Uh, that's tricky. Those two I'm just going to throw into like the building later on. Bus station. So street assets. Next this building is number Three, four, five. Wow. Which building is this? Number. Oh, number four. Okay. So what I'm going to do is the large canopy and the neon sign huge. I'm going to place into number four because they are kind of part of the building by this point. We have a floor which we can just kind of like leave in limbo. We have this rooftop which we can go ahead and just throw into our rooftops. And finally, we have some corners, which are, I believe, all part of over here. So I'm going to throw those all into. Oh, that's annoying that it auto saved white as I wanted to drag into building one and our zebra crossings into our decals. Awesome. Okay, so that's now all nice and organized again. Now, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and make some adjustments to our lighting. So over here, we currently have we have some volumetric clouds, we have a skylight, sky atmosphere, exponential height fog, and a directional light. Turning this into like a night scene is actually quite easy. What I want to do is I want to get started by, in my directional light, to be honest, you can often just literally delete it, as you can see over here. So we are deleting it, but then what we would want to do is we want to go into our skylight and make some adjustments. Now, if you want, you can try. It doesn't always work, but if you, for example, set your direction light very low to like an intensity of 1, and then rotate it up, you can, you can basically achieve the same effect. But at that point, you can just well delete it. So we are going to delete our direction light. And the important thing is for our sky lighting, which is, yes, we need a skylight for, we cannot go for real time be because we are not going to... Um, we don't actually have a sky to bounce light off. Instead, what we are going to do is we are going to use an HDR map. So if you go ahead and turn off your real-time capture and set your source type to be SLS specified cube map. So yeah, HDR map is like a cube map. Now, these cube maps you can actually find in many different locations online completely for free. One that I like to use is I like to use HDR Haven. Yeah, HR Haven, if we go ahead and go here. Now, they changed their name to Polyhaven, but if you go to the HCRIs, you can go in here and you can actually find hundreds of free HCRIs. You don't even need to sign up, you can just go ahead and download them. 
And if you want, you can support their Patreon over here. So what I went I ahead and I went to Night, for example, and in here, I just downloaded a bunch of Night HDRs. So we have over here, for example, Night 1, Satera Night, uh, Kloppenheim. Like, there's uh, quite a few different HDRs. And I just basically went ahead and I just downloaded like five or six. And of course, I already did like some trying out. So if we go over here to our textures and then HDRI, I end up with the Kloppenheim 02 4K. The rest I removed. And the reason I removed them is because they are really big in file size. These are, can often be like 100 MB per file or something like that. But the Kloppenheim, what was it? 02 is this one. Over here. So you can see it's not completely night. But what we can do is if we go ahead and just uh, tone down the intensity a lot. It becomes more night. And then you can just go ahead and go can go up here and download it. But of course this is <laughs> included in your source files. So you don't actually have to do that. Now when we drag on Kloppenheim it will probably... As you can see, it will kind of boost up our lighting again. It looks a bit strange because, of course, the sky is never affected. But it will boost up our lighting. And then if we go into our camera actor, we can go ahead and you can set your source cube map angle, which is like the rotation. And based upon that, it does change like your colors and stuff like that. So we want to go for something that looks quite... That gives us quite a bit of like shadow and stuff like that. So... Uh, 200, let's keep in mind 210. And then I just like to carefully move this and give it give it a second to actually update. Yeah, you know what? I quite like 210. Let's do 210. So you can see like here, we get quite a bit of difference. And this is basically just rotating the sky around. And based upon that, the light hits your assets differently. Now, the most important one is that we want to go to our intensity scale and set this one quite low. See, so that we get like quite a dark map, so 0 0.05. And now what you already start to see is you start to see on your cars already these more interesting reflections and everything going on. Now we still need to place a lot of res reflection spheres and everything, but for now that's quite nice. Uh, volumetric cloud we can delete because we simply don't need it. Um, it would just be wasted memory. Exponential height fog, I don't think we really need that one um uh, yeah we, well we need that one but not now later on so at this point we have something good enough that i can go ahead and start showing you although i would probably want to go into my skylight because i can see my windows are a little bit too strong and set this to like 0 0.03 for example because they will affect my windows okay so what i want to show you now is i want to go ahead and i want to show you uh, blueprints so at this point on the lighting part is pretty much done for this chapter i want to quickly give you a showcase of uh, the type of blueprints that we have and also a tiny bit on how i set them up and that will just give you like a good idea of um, how powerful blueprints are so let's save our scene and now in your bp folder in the vertex bank parent we will have a few blueprints these blueprints are neon signs and also actually street lights and when we drag one on as you can see it's very difficult to see anything um, there is one thing that i can actually do and that is that i can very quickly go down here but i uh, if for the people that already clicked away don't worry i will go over this again uh, you want to go to visual effects post process volume throw this one into your lighting and simply go all the way down and turn on infinite extent. What that means is this is a post effect. It's something that will be added on top of the camera after all of the rendering. Including vignetting, color grading, that kind of stuff. Exposure, which is the one I'm going to work on now. Infinite extent just means that it will always be active, no matter where you are. And then quickly go to your exposure. And turn on the exposure composition, compensation, minimum brightness and maximum brightness. Set the minimum and maximum to 1. And then simply play around with your exposure compensation to get something quite decent. So let's do 5.5. And now basically the reason that I'm doing this is because when we clamp these values down, no matter how close we get, you can remember that when I turn these off, everything became very dark. But now, no matter how close I get to a building, it will always stay with the same composition. Okay, so... 
Let's go to our blueprints and drag in our neon sign long over here. Now, if we go ahead and rotate this, you can, oh, I will need to turn on snapping. You can right away see that this blueprint actually includes lights. So this blueprint has like a bunch of stuff. If we go over here, what do we have? We have control over the light color over here. We can simply click on the color and then we can, for example, change light. Let's say that this one is going to be like a blue light. Now we have the intensity, so 0.5, 1. You probably won't want to, you probably do not want to make this very intense because it's a neon sign. You have your object in which you can choose which neon sign you want. Because remember, we have a few of them. So I can literally just drag here 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So just like that, I can choose very quickly the neon sign that I want. And I have a randomize button which um, will randomize the neon signs if I ever want to do that. So we have this. Now, as you can see, this is Blueprints. Blueprints is like a visual programming language inside of Unreal. It is very, very powerful. You can actually create your entire game with it without ever needing to touch any type of code most of the time. But um, we are just using it in like a very basic way. So it is really nice. The only thing that's not nice is that you can very quickly drag on another Blueprint to replace the original one. But what you can do with Blueprints is if we double click on it, it basically comes in two stages. I don't know why it's frozen. There we go. So if we just drag this on here, it comes in a few stages. Let's say we have the first one, which is your viewport. In your viewport, you can go ahead and you can place lights just like normal. You can literally go to um, copy paste or you can press art over here and you can find lights. What I did is I literally just went into my scene and I just uh, placed a normal blueprint. Uh, where are you? I just placed a, no placed a normal neon sign. I placed some lights next to it, just some area lights, which we will go over later on. Over here you can find them, rectangle lights, sorry, not area lights. And I then just press copy paste and pasted it in my template over here. So as you can see, yes, we can place lights over here and we can place our signs. Now of course this blueprint has a little bit more to it because just like how we work in Substance Designer in our actual scene, where are you, over here, we have these exposed values. Now this is something that I don't want to go into because this is definitely not a blueprint tutorial but I just kind of like want to run you through it. So what we have over here is we have over here this node loop and let me just see that to make sure that I'm in the correct location. Uh, yes, I am. So let, let's just ignore these. These are literally just for the randomize button, but it's a little bit difficult. Um, what I can do here is I have my static mesh. And the static mesh over here is just like a ray. Basically what I'm doing, I'm not going to explain to you how I made this. I'm just going to explain to you how this would work. So we have over here a list of static meshes, which we can simply drag in. We can just drag in whatever mesh we want. Then what we are doing is we are basically um, doing some calculations to make sure that the list is all in order and everything is working. I don't know why I have this. I can literally delete that. So basically all of this you can kind of ignore. We are doing some calculations to make sure that the list that we can have 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then what we are doing is over here, we are setting our list using this component. And da, 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 where are you? I was wait, of course, you are at the very beginning. So basically what we are telling with this note is we are telling it replace neon long zero one, which is literally this one with whatever we select in the list. Meaning that replace neon 01, so replace your neon sign with whatever number is in your list. So if number one is this white one, you can go here, yeah, you can let, literally see it working, see? So when we change something, you can see it working. You can see here, number one is the white sign. So we are replacing the number in the list. Then what we are doing is we are adding our lights to this list. And what we have is we basically have like our light color in here. So we are creating a list of our lights because we have two of them. And because we want to edit these lights at the same time. 
So we want to have the exact same values at the same time. And what we are then doing is then we are setting our light color. It is literally called set light color using our input and our input. I'm trying to <laughs> tell you this in like substance designer terms. It's a bit tricky, but our input is literally our light color over here, which allows us to change the color. Awesome. So then next to that, here you can see it's doing the light color. And then lastly, we have a light intensity, which is again like a normal input. It's just a value. And we literally have a note that's called set intensity. So most of these notes, the key ones are just setting the intensity, setting the light color and setting the static mesh. All of this other junk is literally just me making sure that everything works correctly and that we have all of our models that we want to have. And yes, then next to this, we also have a little tool that will just randomize our signs where it will once again grab our list and it will basically just randomize it. You can see the word random here. And then um, it will basically output our randomized sign. So I hope that that made a little bit of sense. Basically, the general takeaway is that you can quickly add or change values that you would also have in your properties over here. However, you can change multiple values at the same time. And you can also load very quickly load in multiple models like this. And that is basically the power of blueprints. Now, blueprints, this is like the minimum power. I want to tell you, like blueprints is a very, very large part of Unreal. I personally rarely use them because I'm working more as like an artist and not like a technical artist or a programmer. But with blueprints, you can do everything from making your character walk, like uh, we have in our third person character, to uh, creating entire lighting systems or entire like automatic building systems inside of Unreal. Like you can do so much stuff with it. So I would definitely recommend looking into it. So that's how we are using these blueprints. Now the street light is not much different. We have over here a street light, which we, I realized that we will most likely need to replace our original ones. And this street light, if I press G, it just has like a light sitting over here and that's it. If we go into our street light, it does not even have anything. You can see that there's literally nothing in here. It is simply just a blueprint of a street light with over here a spotlight. So you can also see that you can use blueprints almost like prefabs. You can build entire chunks of uh, props and levels and everything in your blueprint. And then when you would drag it into your scene, it would just stay in the same position as you have done it into your blueprint. Now, the reason we don't do it much now anymore is because we now have our modeling tools. And in your modeling tools, you can literally just press mesh merge and then you can create a unique mesh. And that's often also more optimized. So that's why they don't use blueprints that much anymore for this technique. But it is something that used to be used. So knowing all of that, what I will do is I will spend the rest of this chapter simply replacing my street lights over here. Now, as I said before, we cannot just drag and drop to change my street light with the new one. But what we can do is we can go to our old street light, press right click and copy the location, delete it, and then go to our new street light and right click and just paste the location like that. Now you might wonder why have I done a street light in the blueprint? Because imagine that I would need to go in and every time I have a street light, I would need to also duplicate my light on top of it. I would need to make sure that my light is exactly below it. And then if I want to make a change, I would need to select all of those lights and make a change. Right now, all I need to do is just select my blueprint. And or uh, actually I, all I need to do now is go into my blueprint. And then just click on my light over here. And then I can quickly make a change like the color or intensity. And then it will just automatically update. On top of that, what I can also do is I can also go in here and in my street light. Oh, no, wait, sorry. Um, it does not do that. Sometimes it will show your light and you can adjust your light. But I turned that off because I want to have control over all my lights. So that's basically the general reason. It's just to save time. And to not need to place as many objects. So I just copy it. Go here. Right click. Paste location. So it doesn't take too long. I will do this just quite quickly. Right click. Copy. Delete. Right click. Paste. Duplicate. Right click. Copy. 
delete, right click, paste, duplicate. So yeah, not the most exciting thing. And then for this one, you just need to remember that we need to rotate it. So we can go ahead and copy, delete, right click, paste. Ah, does it work? No, uh, I accidentally pressed copy. So now I need to like undo, copy. That's what happens when I go too fast. Right click, paste. And then I just need to go ahead and with my snap rotation on quickly rotate this back to its original position. And then I will, for example, grab this one so that I don't have to rotate it back again. Right click, copy, delete, paste. And over here, copy, delete, paste. There we go. I know, at this point, most of you have probably already clicked away. <laughs> I totally understand if that is what you've done. Copy, because it's not very interesting. Uh, I want to keep this in because I don't know. Right now, I don't really have anything else to say. But in case I say something, this is like a perfect moment to talk about things. But yeah, just in general, blueprints are nice. Now, I'm definitely not very good at them. You might have noticed that when I tried to explain to you. So you would really need to go to like a technical artist or something like that if you want to uh, know more about blueprints there are a couple of tutorials out there and i'm actually also for my own brand uh, i'm actually also developing a tutorial and vertex school i believe also has a tutorial so that's really cool so you can just go to vertex school now i don't know if they were i at least i heard that they were all creating one or they already have one but i honestly i cannot say for sure so i would definitely recommend just having a talk with them if you want to find that out. Copy, delete, paste. There we go. So that's why I'm not really touching on the topic right now. But then again, this is a tutorial about building a level. It's not so much a tutorial about doing technical blueprints. That would be a little bit strange if you got this course to learn how to build a level and I'm going on and on about blueprints. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, it's really handy also for those neon signs that we can simply place those. One sec. There we go. Uh, yeah, that we can simply place those and very quickly make changes to them. And it's great for just in general trying to find out what works in your scene. If I had to keep replacing my neon lights and changing my light colors and everything for multiple lights and do all that selecting... It would be very slow for me to actually do all of this prototyping. So this prototyping, you can imagine it. At one point, this, these were white lights or red lights. And I just kind of like tried to play around with like, okay, I want some blue here, some red here to get like some interesting colors. And that's where the blueprints are really handy because I don't have to go in and like select two lights every single time. I want to make a small change to the colors. And just, it's, yeah, it's just a mess if you do all of that stuff. Here, let me just duplicate two of them already. Copy, delete, paste, copy. And now we will also right away have some light. Now you can notice, <laughs> I know it's a bit late that I'm saying this, but I went to unlit mode because else it's it is too dark for me to properly see what I'm doing. So, yeah. So copy, delete, tick, paste. There we go. Okay, and now if I would go outside of unlit mode, you can see that now we instantly already have a little bit of lighting going on in our scene. It's not a lot, but it works. So let's go ahead and end the chapter here. I know it was just like a quick short chapter. What we're going to do in the next chapter is we are going to work on placing all of our neon lights and also placing some additional uh, fake lights so to speak and just in general balancing everything out so that we already get like a basic lighting pass that works really well and then what we can do later on is we can just keep polishing that up more and more but uh, I first of all between the polishing I want to make or I want to start placing some more assets and placing some decals and stuff like that so let's go ahead and continue with this in our next chapter